This is Mac OS Ken. Notes from Wall Street that are bullish ish. Three tries to undo the App Store and a monster deal for Apple TV Plus. It is Friday, the 21st of January, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by New Relic. Helping you monitor, debug, and improve your entire stack. Learn more and get started at newrelic.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Upstart, fair and fast personal loans. If debt is weighing you down, chances are it's not just one thing. High interest loans, credit card debt, other personal expenses, even just a few things can add up. But one thing might help. A personal loan from Upstart. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt, and it all happens online. Over a million people have used Upstart to turn the things that they were paying for into one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Instead of just your credit score, Upstart considers other factors, like your income, current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000, and you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Mac OS Ken. U P S T A R T. That's upstart.com slash Mac OS Ken. Don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash Mac OS Ken. The good news from Morgan Stanley analyst Katie Huberty. She expects Apple to beat consensus when it reports earnings for the first quarter of fiscal year 2022 next week. The bad news in her note. Well, it's not really bad. It's more tepid. Apple 3.0 ran part of her note wherein she says revenue stability, upcoming product launches, and expansion into new markets or what make Apple attractive going forward, not what or how it did last quarter. Her thinking seems to be that any holiday quarter boost is already baked in. Huberty has an overweight rating on Apple shares. Her price target on the shares is $200. Similar to Huberty's excitement around Apple and things to come, Evercore analyst Amit Darianani is all about the next couple of quarters. Seriously. The next two, June and September. Apple 3.0 ran part of a note he wrote, wherein AdRock pointed to strength in the second half of fiscal year 2022, given several product launches expected. Closer in sounds like less fun. Advising that investors consider seasonality, he seems to think that the street either is or may be expecting too much from Apple sales this quarter. According to Darianani, on average, March quarter sales are down 32% quarter over quarter versus street models calling for a 25% quarter over quarter drop currently. He and his are splitting the difference, looking for a sales drop of 28% from last quarter to this one. Doing a list of good, bad, bad, good. Key data points noted by the analyst include... Better iPhone availability as demand remains strong and component availability improved. That's good. Apparent deceleration for iPhone in China in the December quarter. Apple has gained what share it will for now, seems to be his thinking. Not good. An anticipated deceleration in services revenue. Also not good. And continued strength for Apple wearables, given high demand for watch and AirPods through Christmas season. And that's good. 
Ariannani has an outperform rating on Apple shares. Evercore's price target on the shares is $210. Surprising no one, the American Innovation and Choice Online Act made its way out of committee on Thursday. I know we covered it a lot here yesterday, but Engadget gives it a good quick summation. Sponsored by Senator Amy Klobuchar, Democrat of Minnesota, the piece says this bill would prohibit Amazon from promoting its own Amazon Basics gear over similar products and search results. Similarly, Apple and Google would be barred from pushing their in-house apps over those from third-party developers in their respective app stores. The bill passed out of both the Antitrust Subcommittee and the Primary Judiciary Committee with the support of that vote and will now be put forth on the Senate floor. It looks like the Coalition for App Fairness is back to playing its state-by-state game. Last year, members of the organization backed legislation in Arizona, Minnesota, and North Dakota seeking to mandate the acceptance of third-party payment options for apps in Apple's App Store, as well as the Google Play Store. Apple and Google lobbied against each of those pushes, and Apple and Google prevailed. Now a piece from Cult of Mac says David Heinemeyer Hansen is backing a bill in Illinois that's looking to try again. Heinemeyer Hansen is the CEO of Basecamp, a member of the Coalition for App Fairness. According to the Cult, the Freedom to Subscribe Directly Act wants Illinois lawmakers to prohibit both companies, Apple and Google, from requiring developers to use the App Store and Google Play to sell software and subscriptions. The piece says it also looks to prohibit retaliation against a developer or user for using an in-application payment system or digital application distribution platform that is not owned by, operated by, or affiliated with Apple or Google. No word on next steps for the proposed legislation. While the U.S. Senate tries to undo the App Store business model in D.C. and David Heinemeyer Hansen tries it in Illinois, Epic Games is still trying it in California. 9to5Mac says the company has officially filed an appeal with the U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. This was over the big Apple Epic Fortnite fight of 2020 and 2021. The piece says the ruling Epic is appealing required that Apple adjust its App Store guidelines to allow developers to link out to third-party payment options. Judge Yvonne Gonzalez-Rogers, however, ruled that Apple did not hold a monopoly on the market in question. And isn't it nice when neither side is pleased? Actually, Apple did call her ruling a huge win and a resounding victory. Still planning to appeal, though. Now Epic has started that ball rolling on its side. The company is asking the Ninth Circuit to overturn Judge Rogers' ruling. 9to5Mac has Epic arguing that she erred in deciding that the App Store and its guidelines do not violate antitrust laws. Epic's filing says if not reversed, this decision would upend established principles of antitrust law and, as the district court itself recognized, undermine sound antitrust policy. The piece cites a report from Bloomberg that says Epic wants the Court of Appeals to send the case back to U.S. District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez-Rogers in Oakland with instructions on how to address issues raised in its antitrust suit. No word on the time frame for the appeal. Apple hardware users appear to be pretty close to the next round of operating system updates. Mac Rumors ran a few reports Thursday saying that release candidates of iOS and iPadOS 15.3, macOS Monterey 12.2, watchOS 8.4, and tvOS 15.3 were out to developers. But developers don't get to have all the fun. The same piece said that the iOS, iPadOS, and macOS release candidates had also gone out to Apple's public beta testing program. Indications are that the next round of updates will fix things that need fixing without much in the way of new features. For example, a separate piece from Mac Rumors says the macOS and iOS RCs fix the WebKit indexed DB data leak issue, about which we heard earlier this week. 
though the piece doesn't say so specifically, one assumes it is fixed or will be in the iPad OS version as well. Now, I have spotted one feature in the next round of updates that would have to be called either new or expanded. A piece from 9 to 5 Mac says HomePod software 15.3 turns on multi-user voice recognition for two new countries. According to that piece, software version 15.3 adds Siri voice recognition support for up to six users in a home in English for India and in Italian for Italy. This update also includes performance and stability improvements, according to the report. New OS release candidates were not all developers got on Thursday. Developers also got a way to create custom offer codes for subscriptions. While Apple made special discount codes available to developers starting back in 2020, a piece from 9to5Mac says those codes are now customizable. According to the report, developers can now create their own custom discount codes to distribute to customers similar to what online stores already offer. Previously, discount codes were randomly generated and also one-time use, meaning that the developer had to generate a code for each person. While one-time codes remain available, the piece says Apple believes that custom offer codes will make it easier to acquire, retain, and win back subscribers. You know those times when you hear something and you think, how is it not always like that? Well, anyway, it's like that now. More news in a moment, but first a word from New Relic, helping you monitor, debug, and improve your entire stack. If you're a software engineer, how familiar does this sound? It's 9 p.m. You are finally unwinding from work. Your phone buzzes with an alert. Something's broken, and your mind's already wondering what it could be. Is it the server? Is it back-end or front-end? Is it a bug that you introduced? Now the whole team's scrambling from tool to tool and messaging person after person to find and fix the issue. That will not happen with New Relic. New Relic combines 16 different monitoring products that you would normally buy separately, so engineering teams can see across their entire software stack in one place. With New Relic, you can pinpoint issues down to the line of code so you know exactly why the problem happened and take care of it quickly. That's why the developer and ops teams at Postman, DoorDash, Atlassian, and more than 14,000 other companies use New Relic to debug and improve their software. The next 9 p.m. call is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does. And you can get access to the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data free forever, no credit card required. Sign up at newrelic.com slash macOSken. N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C. That's newrelic.com slash macOSken. New Relic dot com slash mac os can shuffle at the head of apple public relations after a scan eight months on the job mac rumor says stella low is out as apple vp worldwide corporate communications and kristen huget quail is in not sure when she added the quail but kristen huget is an old name where apple communications are concerned in announcing her promotion, Apple said, Kristen has played an instrumental role sharing Apple's story of incredible innovation and strong values for more than 15 years. With an extraordinary depth of experience and a long track record of principled leadership, Kristen is uniquely suited for her new role overseeing worldwide communications. Why say more than 15 years when you could just as accurately say for over 16 According to Mac Rumors, Huguet Quayle has been at Apple since 2005 and has been on Apple's communication team. She joined Apple when the company had fewer than 20,000 employees and was responsible for leading communications during Apple's encryption fight with the FBI. 
Is it wrong that I want to know what happened with Stella Lowe? Because I really want to know what happened with Stella Lowe. And congratulations, you get quail. I look forward to continuing to be ignored by your department for years to come. The point of a movie trailer is to generate buzz. I mean, it's to tell people about the film, sure, but really it's to get people interested, excited, to get people talking. All of that makes the trailer for the upcoming Apple TV Plus film, The Sky is Everywhere, a bit confusing. The trailer itself isn't confusing. It's actually pretty straightforward. And it does what a trailer should. I am a tiny bit interested in seeing the movie now that I've seen the trailer, and I really was not interested at all based on the description. We had that description last week when we got a release date for the film. It tells the story of 17-year-old Lenny Walker, a radiant musical prodigy struggling with overwhelming grief following the sudden loss of her older sister. She falls in love, though that is complicated by her relationship with her sister's former boyfriend. Through her vivid imagination and honest, conflicted heart, says Apple, Lenny navigates first love and first loss to create a song of her own. And yes, the trailer still made me want to see it. What's weird about the trailer, though, a piece from my download blog says though it is on YouTube, it's an unlisted upload, and it actually shows that Apple TV Plus uploaded it on the 13th of January. Plus, the official description attached to the trailer indicates that Apple doesn't actually plan to make it public until the early stages of next month. The Sky is Everywhere hits Apple TV Plus on Friday, the 11th of February. The trailer is on YouTube, at least as of now. For those who want to see it, I'll put a link to it on macOSken.com. Season 3 of the creepy M. Night Shyamalan series Servant hits Apple TV Plus today, and there is something to watch about it before you watch it. iMore says Apple Streaming Service has posted a first look for the third season. In it, the piece says, M. Night Shyamalan explains that as the Turners, the couple at the center of the series, desperately try to return to their normal lives, a new darkness looms. In short, it's another season of Servant. Seasons 1 and 2 are available to watch in full on Apple TV+. The first episode of Season 3 is available now. If you want to see what you're in for before you get into it, you can peep the first look on YouTube. And finally today. They haven't bought a studio, but Apple TV Plus has made a monster deal for some established intellectual property. The Cupertino streamer issued a press release Thursday announcing Apple's expedition into the MonsterVerse. That's the name for the storytelling continuity set up between 2014's Godzilla, 2017's Kong Skull Island, 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters, and 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong. The release has Apple TV Plus announcing a series order for a new original live-action series from Legendary's MonsterVerse franchise, following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco, and the shocking new reality that monsters are real. The series explores one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy linking them to the secret organization known as Monarch. If you're wondering why Apple would go this way, I can think of close to two billion reasons. From a storytelling side, there is literally a world of stuff to explore. From a business side, Apple says MonsterVerse films have accumulated close to two billion dollars globally at the box office and is ever expanding, with the latest iteration being a new anime series, Skull Island. Legendary Television is on board to produce, as is Toho, Godzilla's studio home in Japan, all the way back to the 1950s. Behind-the-scenes talent includes production people from Star Trek Enterprise and the recent Disney Plus series, Hawkeye. If I had to stand in line for it, I would. Luckily, I will not have to just get to sit on my couch and wait for who knows how long. The release says nothing about a time frame for the untitled MonsterVerse series. 
Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Upstart, fair and fast personal loans. Learn more and check your rate at upstart.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by New Relic. Monitor, debug, and improve your entire stack and get 100 gigabytes of data free. Learn more and get started at newrelic.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways, info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.